Hi, welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has a long record of making alarming and alarmingly incorrect claims about Iran's nuclear program. That doesn't stop him from appearing on national television, though. Here he is on CNN. In September of 2012, you told me uh, that you thought Iran was probably uh, six to nine months away from being able to have full nuclear weapon uh, capability. Where is it now? I didn't say weapon capability. I said the nuclear uh, uh, rich material. Written rich that is fissile yes, material for a bomb. They're about uh, two months away and they'd, li they'd like to, be, to stay two months away. Now, why you treat Netanyahu as an expert on Iran is curious, since he's been offering these kinds of bogus timelines for years. Reality tells us a very different story about Iran's enrichment right now, but what viewers got from CNN was just more spin. They're developing right. intercontinental ballistic missiles to put nuclear bombs on those missiles for you. Don't let it happen. And that missiles claim has been debunked, too. Netanyahu recently told reporters that they should spend more time covering Iran's race for the bomb. Maybe he knows he won't be called out on his own record. The Benghazi scandal doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon, thanks to the politicians and right-wing pundits who keep pushing it. In 2012, an attack on a U.S. compound in Libya killed four Americans. And since then, there's been this relentless campaign from the right saying it was an al-Qaeda attack, a fact that the White House tried to minimize. The latest, an email from a White House advisor just days after the attacks that has been twisted into some kind of smoking gun. A new email seems to call into question what the White House said about its role. Now, the line from the right that was echoed on ABC is that there's something scandalous about recommending that National Security Advisor Susan Rice link the attacks to protests over an anti-Islamic video. This is apparently a big revelation because there was never a protest there, and intelligence officials didn't think the video was related to any of this. The White House has long insisted Rice's talking points came from the intelligence community, but the email is written by a top political aide. And the former CIA director recently told Congress the intelligence community didn't agree with what Rice said. But ABC is being very misleading here. The earliest intelligence did, in fact, link the protests to this video, as did journalists who were at the scene that day reporting. That's why the infamous talking points mention that. It wasn't a cover story invented by political aides. No matter what the facts might be, the right is dedicated to keeping the Benghazi scandal alive. And some in the media are helping them. And finally, here's NBC Meet the Press host David Gregory introducing his roundtable on April 27th. We're back with our political roundtable. Jeffrey Goldberg, a correspondent for The Atlantic magazine and columnist for Bloomberg View. Neera Tandon is president of the Center for American Progress and former policy director for Hillary Clinton. Rich Lowry is editor of the National Review. And new to the roundtable, happy to have Mallory Factor, professor of international politics and American government at the Citadel Military College in South Carolina. He is also the editor of the best-selling book, Big Tent, The Story of the Conservative Revolution. Now, one thing about that lineup jumps out right away. We've got three white male conservative-leaning pundits and Democratic liberal pundit Neera Tandon. Not exactly a model of media diversity, in other words. It went from bad to worse when the topic turned to affirmative action in the wake of the recent Supreme Court decision. One has to wonder about the NBC producers, who thought that a show hosted by a white male should invite three other white men and one Asian woman to discuss diversity. But the show kicked off with a segment about the odious racism of Los Angeles Clippers owner Donald Sterling. For that conversation, though, the show assembled an all-African-American panel. And there's something telling about this. Obvious, blatant racism calls for non-white panelists to be present. But when it comes to discussing law and public policy, well, that's the domain of conservative white guys. If the idea was to illustrate the need to diversify elite punditry, well, NBC nailed it. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.